it's a personal favorite topic of mine is the uh, the <laughs> rebuilt refurbished debate. Oh, sure. <laughs> that happened. <laughs> yes, the, thank you for asking this question. <laughs> in the used industry, um, yeah. it's and it it uh, I I mean I've seen it get fairly heated before. <laughs> yeah, um, because there is a different view. Well, what what is considered rebuilt? What's considered refurbished? What's considered reconditioned? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've had that what, discussion. What's your take on this? <laughs> we've had that discussion, and, and one guy thinks that refurbished is a higher grade than rebuilt, and the next guy thinks exactly the opposite. So I, I don't know as I actually have answers. Yeah. I, I do know that, like, I mean, uh, the industry is a bit, how might one say, a bit tarnished maybe, but by, by you know, paint job overhauls, mm-hmm. you know, the Sherwin-Williams overhaul. Uh, uh, we use Sherwin-Williams. It's good stuff. But, uh, <laughs> but you gotta, you got to go a little further than that, right? Yeah. And so, um, so I don't know the right word to use because it, the words mean different things to different people. But the, the bottom line is if it's done right, you get right down to the, to the, the if it's done right, Really, the only difference between new and rebuilt is that you started out with molecules that were already solid instead of liquid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in your steel, right? Uh, you didn't start with molten steel. You started with something that, that that's there, and but it, that was already I- in a shape. But um, but I mean, at the same time, there are situations where you know where some of our stuff you can't get it to that place. Well, then you don't right. try and sell it as a as a zero hour rebuild you you because uh, we we kind of like to use a standard what would what would i want if i was the customer right and now i know i'm i know what's inside this thing and would i be happy if i was the customer knowing what's inside there yeah that that's the standard well if we could go then to so if you're doing a rebuild yeah that's what is on maybe let's go with the most common type of pump that you sell on that pump what is being done to it on a i'll say a a full rebuild that this is going to be up to uh up up to full specifications a zero like you said a zero hour rebuild what's actually going into rebuilding that pump well take it completely apart clean the parts right down to clean and spiffy like they're new yeah do a full inspection Sometimes you end up having to remachine the split line. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, new casing rings, new wear rings. Uh, it's basically what, in, like you say, in a centrifugal pump, and a lot in a in a recip also. It's the surfaces that that's what's worn. Okay, right. It's the the, the basic underlying body of the thing is fine. It's, yeah. It, it, It'll never be affected, but the surfaces are eroded or corroded or or damaged in some way. Um, you have to bring those surfaces back to their original condition, mm-hmm. and when and when you do that, it, it's in no way inferior to a new pump. Right. Now, and I d- I don't want to like there's are there are some advances you know in 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 the pumping industry, material selection and and uh, Oh, some of the, some of the, like the cooling and the bearing uh, arrangements and that sort of thing. But the, but actually overall pumping technology, actually how you create pressure mm-hmm. <laughs> with, with a, re, a positive displacement or a centrifugal system, I mean, that essentially hasn't changed in 60 years. You know, the, it, it's the, the, the technology is the same. So you, if you have a pump that's, even even as old as I am, you get that thing back to its original condition, and it'll work just as just as well as a brand new one. Yeah. But but okay, then there is such a thing as a thing being wo- being corroded, for instance. Right. And you can't quite get, and you can't get there. Well, then you don't try. But the uh, but a lot of times that that's actually rare. Most right. of the time, we can bring something back to its original condition and it works like new and it's good for uh good for many years well that what i was one of the things that i wonder is if you i i know from from working with you 
and you know and you know doing due diligence of sort of how you're perceived in the industry and power zones a very respected brand how do you uh how do you outline that for the customer that you've delivered that you've went in and done all those and you haven't just done a, a done a paint job because once you close it back up <laughs> it is so and i, I know i i asked this question because i know that there are steps that you take to do that yeah so how are you especially to a new customer that's you know they've maybe done a little bit of due diligence but you're a fairly new customer to them how do you uh show to them that we have done all this work what what is it? I mean, it can't it can't just be brand. You must have have a, a steps that you take through your engineering and that to show that we've done all these steps. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have a we, we do a pretty extensive pictorial record of the rebuild. Yeah, and, and mm. we we love customer inspections. I mean, mm. come bring it on. You know, to come and see us. We love right. it. Uh, they they usually leave more impressed than what they come. You know. Yeah. Mm. Um, but then we do a. A full rebuild report, mm -hmm. both a detailed, you know, with all the numbers and clearances and stuff like that written in there, and then a, and then a, a little bit of a glossy just to yeah. show them, you know, the, with the pictorial record of how it came in and what was done. And right. How it, that's a uh, good. That's a progress. That the pictorial progress. That's a. That's yeah. a good way to do it mm -hmm. for customers. Yeah. yeah.